Hi everybody, Mature Simmer here. So hopping back in, you can see current VIP order level 2. I've got a couple orders to fill. Didn't advance any time at this point, because I've got stuff ready to go, so there's no reason to move along any further until I need to. So welcome to Hills of Tuscany here with the VIP order manager. VIP Order Manager is the centerpiece of my single player series is at this point. I'm thinking that's the plural series is. But if not, I'll just write it off to being tired. Um, I kind of spent a pretty late night yesterday getting the previous episode work completed, but still needed to get up at the normal time today and figured, hey, I want to get a little bit more done and at least get this next episode taken care of. So the VIP Order Manager is what's driving this series. You can see we're now in level 2. We're going to get a payout of 71,600 euros once we deliver these two orders. So we're also going to get paid for these things. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the oats because that will just let me get that done and then the rye is going to take a couple plus I don't exactly remember where resale cereals is that's right it is here so I basically need to pop out the way I did up and out and then figure out how to get over there so the problem is if I go this way I'm gonna get into that building I don't know that there's a road but I think this is still faster than going the other route. So let me grab some oats and we'll do that. Ah, there's a collectible there. I didn't realize this map had collectibles. So we're not going to really worry about that because that's not anything I'm looking for. So here we go. Oops, you know what? I need to set my fill limit. 16,000. We can verify there at the bottom of the help menu. I always kind of double check because it's better than going around. You know, some of the the places like on Riverview where I was sitting, I could sit on the grate and the out point was right on top of it. So I could just uh, dump into my trailer and then dump back into the silo, but here would require a little bit more work. So yeah, I think the other thing I'm going to have to do here at some point is get some diesel over to the farm. So I'm gonna, probably going to go ahead and get that done at some point. Looks like we've got canola and maybe that's meal. Still not sure how that's pronounced. Last episode I tried to look it up while I had some automation running and cannot find such a plant or a crop. I thought it was short for millet. It does not appear to be that. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right or what exactly it even is. I mean it's a crop of some sort and I guess it doesn't ultimately matter. It's being harvested and it's something to work on, but Farming Simulator isn't known for some fake crops, so don't know. But yeah, this is still probably easier than going out the side gate and coming over here to the road. So I will take this route, but the nice thing is we don't have to go very far. Imagine being that guy. That That's a heck of a driveway right there very big or very steep I suppose if you've just got a pickup truck or something it's not too bad so yeah this area here just a bit of the flatter space on the map I think this was one of the first places I went to sell and I was like oh it's like Hobo's Hollow and totally flat but it's not so came through here before Hence this gate being open. So it's always a nice thing. But 
this is what I need here. And so we will be keeping an, a VIP or making a VIP happy here with this oat delivery. I'm playing on hard difficulty here, so I'm not getting a whole lot of money for these deliveries, as you will see. I'm also obviously not at all paying attention to the co the price and so forth because it's just more important to keep moving forward. So about 10,000 euros for that. I think I'm going to go back through this way. I think it's actually easier. It's a nice, nice hill right there that we've got this tucked against. So I do like this map for just how all of that is done. I've never really tried to do map design myself. Somehow, I, I mean, I do think it's one of those things that I probably would enjoy. Uh, but it probably would also take so much time because I know how long these really good designers take. And it would just chew into to gaming time that I have, so it's just not been one of those things that I've spent a lot of effort looking at, because I'm just not sure that that's what I want to get diverted into. So i got to get back to the farm, and then I need to get the rye over to zero kilometers. So I'm going to do that. We've been there several times, so you should know where that is by now. But I will catch up with you at that point with the last load as we get level 2 completed. So just like we had at times on level 1, we've just got a very quick turnaround to just pop through another level. We're not able to pop through more than one level. We started to do that at the end where we finally got staged that far ahead. Not sure if that pattern's going to repeat itself, I beg to think it won't, uh, knowing with my testing what things looked like, but we'll see. So I will see you at that point. All right, so we're headed out here. Last load of 3,500 liters is what I need to finish the entire set of level two orders. So we'll have a pretty quick turnaround here in making an additional bonus payout. So the way the VIP order manager works is once you complete the level, basically the VIPs accumulate bonuses. You could think of them as tips, I suppose, really nice tips usually, uh, that just give you extra incentive to get done. Uh, in theory, there's a way to abort an order if you've decided, like, it's just too difficult to get done. I avoid doing that. Um, I've not actually really even frankly tested that. I know you get a penalty of some sort, but what I don't know is if you've partially completed things, do you at least get the payout for those things? I think you do. It seems like you would, but then it's obviously offset with the penalty you get for aborting the orders that still weren't fulfilled. Alright, here we go. There's not much in there, so it takes a little while for it to tip back. There we go. 71,600 euros after current VIP order, and again we've just got two items. Let's take a look at the board. Alright, so we've got four so, interesting. So, we're going to need eggs. We're going to need greenhouse items, tomatoes and lettuce, which means I need some greenhouses, which exist on the map, but I just am getting things as I need them. And then we need to work and figure out what I'm going to do with olives. So, uh, that may take a little bit of research, because there is a olive picker that exists here that I've never used, uh, that 
we could utilize, but I just need to figure out exactly how that thing works. But that's coming in the future, but again, a pretty good payout there, 144,000 euros. Obviously, we haven't added any land since then, but no crops that time, and that is kind of what we get a little bit. Now, once again, the I think the tomatoes and the lettuce count as things that aren't limited, so it's really the olive oil that is in that 40% constriction that I have, or restriction, I should say. But right now, instead of sitting here and idling behind the market, let me get back to my farm. Sorry about that. Had a little bit of a panic, like, did I forget to hit the record button? But thank goodness I didn't. I'm here. You've heard me. I really would not want to redo that. It just isn't something ooh, I'd want to do. I've run into that a couple times. Now again, granted the fences are very close to the road. I don't know that they'd be that close to the road normally. So there is a bit of that going on. All right, I don't need to repair, but I am going to go ahead and pull up here and try to at least clean this up a bit. I'm trying to make my equipment look a little better. Uh, I got the harvester here and got it all dialed up a little bit. Actually, this weight has to be clean. That should go pretty quick, I would think. I haven't used weights a lot in my farming. I probably should. I mean, it's more realistic to make sure that I have traction for stuff like this. But it's one of those that I've just been really bad and remiss at worrying about. Um, they're not super expensive items usually, but... So I don't know how long it takes to wash them, but clearly it didn't seem too terribly bad there. Um, I am debating if I if I do something to change my harvest size now that I've got potentially bigger orders. But in the end, like I delivered 79,000 liters over that over the course of all the orders I had in level 1 and level 2. So it's not that I can't do it, but obviously going and doing that at 18,000 a piece, um, it's going to probably be at least five trips. Might get into six. Um, not sure, because let's see, 18, let's say 18,500, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, yep, floating deer. Just wonder if that's just a weird quirk that FS22 has with maps in general, because it's happened on, I think, three different maps I've used at this point. And I can't imagine all the map creators are making the same error that does that, so I'm thinking it's something in how things render. So, in any event, I'm going to go put this over here for now, just because this is a, a decent spot for it. Um, I'm going to disconnect and get myself ready to pull forward. This is field one that we own, sorghum. So you can see we're theoretically going to get about 12,000 liters according to the potential harvest quantity. Um, but you can see, like the pH value is bad, the nitrogen is bad. And that kind of leads me to what I think we should be focusing on next which is taking a look at our fields before I go ahead and get the sorghum planted. So right now, um, you know, there's kind of a mishmash of things. A lot of this was what came with the farm. Not quite sure why the, the map creator has you own these specific things, but maybe it's so you can open gates and, you know, like these areas, I don't even know what they are. I mean, I've been by this, but I'm not quite sure. And maybe it's just so you don't need to worry about it later. Um, so, started with field one, basically these four fields, this field and that field, are ones that I purchased and added based on what I needed immediately in level one. But what that does is the VIPs understand you've got more capacity now, and so they start uh, asking you for things. So, one thing I will do... Uh, I guess before I start 
worrying about the fields is I'm going to I'm going to make the purchases I need so probably still going to turn into a negative day on the farm but hey I'm going to continue to have more stuff so let's see we need some chickens so chickens I uh, have to get to two months before I think the gestation period is that they would start laying and then six months is when they'd start having more chickens if I needed that but this almost seems like like 47 chickens isn't a lot so I'm gonna go ahead um, it's not as if I don't have the money because yes yeah, it's only going to be 2,585. Um, I'm going to have to determine if I need other animals, if the fee makes sense, but there's no way. Um, I, th I think there may be a mod at this point, but there's not normally a way to transport chickens, so the only way you get them is to do this. So we will do that, and there they are, wandering around here inside the grass. Hey, chickens, laying down. Interesting. I guess this is where the eggs are going to go. I didn't realize that, but I guess we'll find out. No, they might go here. Oh no, I guess that space is where they, they go. I think the eggs go here. Okay. So, but the big question... What do they need to eat? Because they're not going to produce anything. So they need wheat, barley, or sorghum. Well, look at that. So, because um, I think it'll take a little bit of time to do things, um, other than just having them around at this point. Again, my goal on the series is to get the VIP orders done. It's not necessarily to run the best and most efficient farms. So with animals, I'll feed them when I need them to give me something. But other than that, since they don't die in FS22, uh, they just kind of exist, and then it becomes a job that I don't really worry about and have to deal with, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So the other item we have is cereal, which means I need to figure out where the cereal mill is. Alright, so I would think resale cereals here is... Um, how I do things. Oh, there's another collectible. So, if you're on this map looking for that kind of stuff, there you go. But resale cereals would seem to be the cereal mill. But I need to figure out how I purchase it, where the trigger is for that. And given that it dropped me in there, it would seem that it would be kind of where I was was at there, but I don't see anything here, so... Hmm... Is there a different cereal mill? Alright, so it's interesting because I've gone ahead... Uh, this is kind of the easiest thing to do on newer maps. So this is where the cereal thing is, but you can see when I have productions on, it doesn't show up. So that is not a cereal production facility and there is not one on the map which means I'm going to need to place one. Alright, so I am trying to not use the space that I had set aside for kind of the uh, platinum productions and so forth so I think and this is the only cereal factory that is available so I'm gonna go ahead and place this here okay so here it is this is kind of the place we pull up to gives us a little bit of room as we try to work that field obviously it we've got a little less space but this is a better use I think of what we need and most importantly here we need honey raisins and then we need oat and corn. So we have some oat and corn. And so basically it's one to one. I need two oats to make two cereal, two corn to make two cereal. Where here I just need one raisin to make two cereal, one honey. I think the problem is that's a heck of a hill. 
Do I do this? Maybe that'll be the nicest way to do it. Because the bees can do their thing. And if I put these kind of behind here, and we go ahead, maybe I'll do a couple of these. And then I need a honey location. So I want to make this as easy to get as possible. Because again, that's kind of a big hill. That's like in the way in the corner there. And this is somewhere where I could pull in to... Or would get things coming out, I think. So forth. So the question really becomes where is the best place for the pallets to go? I'm wondering if I use the space here that I have and just go ahead and place it there. Or maybe I could just put it really close. There's actually one that's exactly the right space, so let's do that. Alright, so there's one allowed per farm. So that is where they will go. So again, we're slowly pulling away and using up our funds at this point as I go ahead and just place things. But what I want to be able to do is to easily be able to kind of get over there and load pallets and so forth. So yeah, that'll work. Oh, I kind of put that one a little bit further back, but that's all right. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, so looks a little weird, but it's lined up nicely on the other side, but we'll leave it that way and it just looks like we made it part of the shed. Why not? So we've got the honey. The next thing we need to worry about is how do we get raisins? And that we know the answer to. The grape production unit is over here. So that was part of the debate I had as I looked at this map initially, because there are some grapes in this location. Um, you know, there's white grapes, and then um, I think, yeah, I think the other purple, the dark purple is something else. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what. Oh, that's olives, okay. So, and this again, you know, there's some of these, so it may make sense to do things there or there. I think these are standard olive trees, so I'm definitely going to need to take a look at things. But let me go ahead and buy the great processing unit because I'm still going to need to do that. So that's 80,000 euros. And there you go, raisins. You know, I also talked about that I would go ahead where it made sense, you know, just to keep with the theme. So this is cereale, which is cereal in Italian, as far as I can tell. So we've gone ahead and renamed our facility for that. But yes, raisins are here, but I talked about these productions that are on the map sometimes being modified. So you can see this grape production unit, and it's called a grape juice production instead of grape production unit, because that's basically what it does produce, but it has this thing called pomace that comes out as well, which can come up and the VIPs can ask for. So this is one of the reasons that I said, you know what, I'm just, I'm not going to have them and supply them with raw grapes. If I need to do anything with grapes or olives, I'm going to do it as part of the production chain. So similarly, you know, we're not selling raisins straight out um, because we know raisins go into cereal. So that was somewhat how I made some of those decisions. In this case, we need regular grapes. So that was the piece I needed to understand. Now again, as a reminder, this is all my equipment. But at this point, rather than working with the crops down in this space, which is close, 
Um, I think it makes sense to go ahead and, and buy this, which includes three uh, regular grape fields. So I'm going to go ahead at a minimum. I'm going to go ahead and buy this. And then the question becomes, do I want to get any of these other fields or vineyards that are here included? Because these do appear relatively small. So I only need 3,500 liters of grapes to make enough raisins for 7,000 liters of cereal. So maybe for now, we'll give this a go. But at this point, I'm just trying to figure out where these are. I think these are, no, no, that's the other ones. I'm trying to figure out where these fields are that I own now. They're like back around here somewhere by the wall. Uh-huh. Okay. So they're down here. All right. So these are ready to harvest. All right. So we've got the soil sampling. Yeah, I would think this might be okay cuz yeah, there's there's more here than one would think that appears on the map. So compared to what I had in Riverview, this might not be bad. And then this is my grape harvester, so I'll be able to do that and get going pretty quickly. So let me start up with that. Why not? Um, so I'm still trying to get my bearings because I think they're the ones down the hill there. So I'll drive around this way. So these are the white grape fields, I think, that are right there behind me. So if I need white grapes at some point, there they are. But the nice thing here is, you know, this is just kind of right around nearby, and then I won't really have to haul anything anywhere, is really what my thought pattern was. So I'll be able to just start up. Oops, I need to unfold the tool, so that raises me up a bit. Now I can turn it on. And let's see. There we go. So again, I need 3,500 liters. It doesn't look like I can specifically limit myself to things here. But the other thing that I don't know... I'm not sure I paid attention to the grapes in Riverview, but if I think about it, I don't think they're going to wither on me. So I think I can just go ahead here, harvest what I need, and then just leave the rest. Which might be a good idea, because then I'm not playing the game of trying to shut down the production operation when I don't need anything else coming out of it. Alright, I'm not quite sure why this is struggling to stay online with the vines. I was debating, you know, going ahead and getting, putting GPS on this, but I think it's just as easy to to drive these right now for the the bit I need. So I'll probably just do that. Um, but let's see. We're thinking I'm going to be at a thousand by the time I finish this row here. So I'm thinking I'm going to need more than one of these, um, one of the three squares here, but not entirely certain. All right, so there's, well, I'm, it, it's almost guaranteed. I mean, because, yeah, there's four, or, or uh, four more rows that haven't been harvested, but, um, you know, I'm getting a little over 300 per, so I'm only going to get about 1,200 more. So maybe I'll be close to 2,500, but obviously I won't be at the 3,500 that I would like to have. So let me continue and get these done, 
to get the 3500 and then when I'm ready to take them over to the GPU and get things going I'll return so I'll see you in a bit alright so I do not want to be producing any grape juice I only want to be producing raisins at this point so we'll go ahead we'll get back here and then we'll dump the grapes in and that should then start things up and there we go the harvester has a capacity of 3100 All right, so it looks like it took a liter so I need 400 liters more so I'm gonna get that done and then we will move on a little further and figure out what's happening so once I have that all operating I'll be back all right so we need olive oil this is the picker that I'm unfamiliar with how it operates and and what it does if it's is it stationary it, it seems to be um, so maybe it looks like I bring take this with a tractor and and come up to a tree and work with it so this is something um, I want to go ahead and try eventually and I suppose there's not really a reason not to do it now so other than changing the colors which costs money so it's not really a reason it can't be these colors it's kind of John Deere looking All right, so it needs 85 horsepower my Landini is 112 this one's a hundred so in theory the tractors I have will work in theory it picks it up this way I guess I don't know this would seem to be the better one to use so let's go grab this here and obviously this only works with you know certain type of trees hmm that's what I'm worried about like I mean this looks like it should work with the three-point hitch here well I don't have anything on the front but yeah I mean clearly if this is gonna line up and, and operate that way cuz I'm, I'm thinking what I need to do then is just back it in to the, the tree but obviously right now this is not connecting yeah this is not going to let me do that so I can't use this tractor I'm guessing the Landini is going to be a another uh, dud as well but maybe not because this may not quite have the connection might not have a modern connection wow that's 100% damage yeah, because this looks strangely the same. But I've got a front and a back, so I've got a couple things I can try here. So let's see if I get any better luck. Okay, nothing there. So this is not helping. So I'm going to have to obviously see what I can utilize. I might have to do some research on this. But yeah, this is not working. I think if I'm seeing things properly, this is uh, what will give me the ability to, to grab these and, and get some of the olives. So, let me see how I get out of here. This is this location, I remember. So, I've opened this gate. 
because I pulled something out of here. I don't remember if this was... I think this was where the large tractor was. But, yeah, it looks like something with the front loader. I'm not sure that this will actually work, but I'm going to try it because it's closer than a tractor, and it certainly also has a lot more horsepower. So, definitely a bit of a maze. Whoops. To get out of here. And then we will be back in this area because this is the other growth space that we're going to need. So there's some more olive trees here of the type that I can use with that olive picker. But that other grove is over there. Looks like maybe if I go this way I can get where I need to. But yeah, it looks like we've got a gate here. So that will take us in to that location. I think this is where I want to be. Definitely trying to get my bearings here. A little bit more complicated. But this is where, you know, it's nice to have all this equipment, because at least I'm not having to worry about equipment. So this was the vineyards I, I just harvested, and I got two rows out of that second batch. Uh, ended up Pulling off 450, I just decided to finish the row, so I have a little bit extra beyond what I really need. But, you know, that's alright. Goodness. I'm just, I'm driving, but I'm kind of sightseeing as well. I'm trying to figure out, like, how would I get to those vineyards, because this is all fenced. So it seems like I'd have to just drive around and come out amongst those buildings like I did. So I guess kind of the same way. You just go out the back there, and then that works. All right, moment of truth. Come on. Really? Well, it kind of showed a front loader. So I was thinking maybe um, this is a wheel loader. It's not a front loader. So the good news is every tractor I own um, has enough horsepower. So I'm thinking this is the smaller one with the... Uh, 95 horsepower that I saw, but let me get over here, but it's more importantly the only one that has a front loader. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bucket placed down, drop that. Again, we've got like a bale spike and so forth, but in theory then, I'm, I'm hoping this will work, I'm hoping I don't need any additional components here. So, get ourselves out of the farm per the normal direction. And yes, because I'm fumbling around here and I'm not really sure what I'm doing, I have slowed speed down. I am intentional about that. I don't want it to be dark when I'm trying to figure this out, but I also don't want to then be chewing up time trying to understand what I need to do. Um, okay, tractor's at 1.7, so I just realized, oh, I don't know that I've moved this or done anything, so I might need to repair, but I don't. The trick is going to be figuring out where things need to go. But yeah, if I know how to connect, then I at least am ready to go with that. So let's see, we're here. Alright, so we just need to go around these fields. So we'll go this way and down and over. Again, just the quicker way out than going through the neighborhood, although this is probably the one of the few implements I have that fits a little bit better. I mean, this is a tiny little tractor. It moves and is about the size of a car, as you can see. It's a little taller, yes, but other than that, it's very similar. All right, so I'm going to go down here because otherwise I'm going to have fields in between. But at this point, yeah, I really would like to use this new olive method and these new trees because I think the trees come with the picker. And so this was a mod that was required by the map, uh, obviously for these reasons. So I would like to go ahead and use it if I can. But obviously... 
there's some tricks to it. So I've just kind of looked at screenshots at this point, and that's how I've determined, oh, it is a front loader, because that's what it's showing is a tractor with a front loader. I'm just hoping there's no other attachment of some sort I need. You know, maybe there is some other piece, in the, but you'd think it would be in the miscellaneous right there with the olive picker. Um, all right, so need to go down this way, and then that gets us by. And so these are the greenhouses that we're going to get shortly, and we're going to get running. And w now that then I have all that hopping along, what I'm going to do is finally tomorrow worry about the fields. So, as I said, I kind of wanted to get everything purchased. Right now we're sitting at above three million, but we've got a few other pieces we need to do that are going to create a bit of a, a dilemma here. So, as far as further costs, so not really a dilemma, but a draw on our funds. How about that? So I think the way the map is set, like this is really somewhat set, like, hey, if I wanted to be a vintner, uh, I would purchase this farm and I would start with this farm. And if I wanted to do something with those plants, I would purchase that. But once again, the, the VIP order manager kind of throws that all out the window because it's like, well, I want you to be everything. So it's kind of because you can see there's a house here with a sleep trigger as well it looks like so uh, there's not really a reason to have that unless this was in essence your farm oh thank goodness all right so the good news is well there's some good news but there's that bad news <laughs> i don't have any weights here I don't want to drive all the way back, but I don't have a choice. It's too heavy. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll take this one. So it doesn't have as much of a weight, but it has a weight. Um, there's a 1,500-pound weight somewhere. Um, I'm not entirely sure exactly where. Um, now this tractor needs some repairs. So I'm sure it's on a, a specific tractor. It just doesn't happen to be uh, the one that I'm on. All right, so I probably need to get myself over, come on, into the space here. Then I can go ahead and work on this. There we go, all right. So fix the front loader, fix the tractor itself. And the weight, yeah, I didn't realize I had this and that this had a front loader as well. I thought the only front loader I had was that small Massey, but this is 150 horse, so that will work. And then I should be able to pick that up and do what I need. So when I get over there, we'll try this again, and then eventually I'll just drive that other tractor back and until I need this somewhere else. Uh, this may be living over there to be ready for the olives. So finally got here to the center vineyard olive grove, whatever you want to call it. The Italian epicenter, because what's more Italian than growing grapes and olives, right? So, um, but got here. I don't know if the lights come on normally. Maybe it's a little bit early yet. Oh, I'm gonna have to move that other tractor. I didn't realize that that wasn't ready to go, but I also didn't realize I had it on. So that's also a good thing. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that and then turn around and get put that on the back so that I have the counterweight and then I would hope that it's going to allow me to pick that up and it'll work fine because that's just a one ton weight 
Um, I'm not sure. I would think if I put it... Uh, no, I think if I pick it up it'll work better, but I'll, we'll play with it if we have to. But at this point, I'm just going to make sure that you know everything works and that I can pick it up, and then I'll kind of go beyond that. So let me fix that, because obviously that's twisted a bit. There we go. All right, cool. And now at least I can lift things and do whatever. So that works. So we're all set there. Now, to obviously produce olive oil, we need an olive mill. So let's take care of that. Another 80,000 euros. So our empire is growing. And once again, as you can see, uh, we can create pomes of olives is also something that can happen. So at this point I'm going to deactivate. Well, I suppose I can activate this. So it's going to create olive oil and pomace. Now I'm confused with the pomace oil other than I suppose if you just want pomace oil. You know, but it's not really creating pomace oil. So that's the confusing part. But this takes two olives to produce one olive oil and then one uh, pomace of olives. So, you know, the, the challenge is, I, I don't know if these are different, because they show as two outgoing products, which concerns me a bit. And then we need tomatoes and lettuce. So let me come here to the very large greenhouses. And so each of these operate together. I believe there are, yes, uh, there's a shrub, very large, very large. Okay, so there's two shrubs and two very large greenhouses, which I don't understand, but maybe it's right behind it. I don't know. So again, I'm going to have to own this. When I do that, it's going to let me buy it so it's a lot more expensive than the other one and again this looks like the whole thing so this is where I'm a bit confused but as soon as you buy it, it everything dies so this is really it here so I guess it's because it's turned around so let me go here but the shrubs will worry about again if we have VIPs who want them. So once again, let's go to our productions. And now you can see, besides from tomatoes, lettuce, strawberries, we can also grow cabbage and flowers, but it's not just water anymore. So I'm going to activate irrigation because I need that. I am not going to be running water to these things. The water trailer exists for animals because I can't automatically do this, but you can see I need seeds and fertilizer to grow these, which would make sense. So I'm going to deactivate this. I'm going to make one of these a lettuce warehouse and one of them a tomato warehouse. So unless I have more than two things going at a time, and again, these go relatively quickly, is the nice thing. But, you know, I need to get, it. these are just kind of showing you so you know where things go. But you need to supply them product to go ahead and get things operating. So I will be doing that at some point. But at this point, we're going to need to get, we've got everything go ready for the cereal, things are moving, so I'm obviously going to have to get things over there, but once again, until I start producing some raisins, and until I have some honey, like getting oats and, and corn there is interesting, but it's not really incredibly helpful. Now I will have to check on something on that before we step away, but olive oil I'll worry about after I get the fields going and similarly since tomato and lettuce are the next level I'm not that concerned about it similarly the eggs 
and I'm thinking 30,000 liters of eggs with 47 chickens. That's going to take some time. So I'm not really worried about that right now. So that's the 1,500 pound weight. At least they're all on tractors, so I don't feel as confused and lost. But unless I have a reason, I think I'm just going to obviously go ahead and let the weights stick with what, what they've got. So what I was going to check is do I have enough corn and canola? I do. So again, it's one for one, so I needed to make sure I had the corn and canola, corn and oats for the cereal. So I'm okay there. I just need to wait for honey and raisins, and those are producing. So at this point, because everything was going slowly, we've only got 101 liters of raisins, but those are moving along. It's one for one, so we should be okay with getting our 3,500 liters of raisins. So I'm going to go ahead and rest, and then we'll get going on checking out our fields. Good morning here. Early February morning. Nice and brisk. So I'm just taking a look. I went ahead and I've got the greenhouses ready to go. So they're producing. We've got one lettuce, six tomatoes. So uh, everything's good. Obviously, again, you can see, I guess it's five or, you know, half a seed and 0.6 liters of fertilizer for both tomatoes and lettuce. It's a little bit different for strawberries, uh, cabbage flowers. They all, all vary a bit. I assume it output raisins. Yes, okay, there we go. I was confer concerned for a bit. Now, hmm, I need more uh, because so confused because there's a thousand. It's supposed to be one for one. I think I put 3,500, so I need 4,000 liters, uh, but it does them pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stay focused on what I need to do. It's just far too easy to get distracted. So let me go ahead because I'm almost positive I need to do lime. I'm pretty sure everything is in terrible shape with that. So we're going to take the spreader here. And this is where the multi-fruit selling point that we had the local co-op put in on the farm here is going to really come in handy because otherwise, like, this would be crazy, uh, is all I could say. So, there we go. We'll get lime. Not very expensive. So you can see our overall environmental score is giving us a 3% bonus right now. Um, you know, tillage is some of that, you know, because of whether things have been plowed or not. Weed control is always a bit of a challenge. Uh, when we don't have weeds, we can't really do much. And then soil sampling, I always struggle with because I think, like, I, all this in theory is is affecting that. But we'll get that pH value up. But you can see, you know, field nine and seven, not too bad. They're actually up there, but 77 is terrible. Um, you know, and most of them, you can see the pH values, the second line. You know, this one's good, that one's better. This one is terrible, it's got fertilizer. This one's terrible, and then this one, again, uh, well, actually it looks like the pH is good. It just doesn't have any nitrogen. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the fields that need lime limed. And obviously then the next step is going to be to get everything planted with sorghum. And once I do that, I think at that point, then I can go ahead and see if we're at the point where I can do something with the olives. 
if I can. Um, you know, I'll go ahead and do that and get that moving within the space uh, so that I can throw things in the olive mill and start producing olive oil. But I think that may give us enough progress here that we'll be in good shape. I mean, if nothing else, obviously we've finished level two, exposed level level four, and are ready to be moving forward. The only other thing that might help is to get some chicken feed over, but what I'm somewhat thinking is once I harvest sorghum, I can get them some chicken feed once I know that I have exceeded what I need. So if I plant everything in sorghum, since the chickens can eat sorghum, that's going to be my simplest thing right now because otherwise I'm just blindly planting, hoping that I have something else happening. But that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I'm going to get to it, and I will see you in a bit. Getting late in the day here. I am just about done getting the lime done on all the fields. I've got a little bit left, uh, basically a, a pass and a half, but it's a partial pass. I just don't know that the lime spreads partially, so I'm hoping I'm going to have enough here with the 5,000. I just don't want to have a lot of extra. Uh, one of the things I've noticed, this map, very dark, so hadn't really showed anything I at night here but figured I'd share that with you as I go ahead and get this wrapped up so that you can see. Uh, this tractor has had a really hard time getting there. You'll notice, if you're observant, some new things. I realized I could have the spreader discs and uh, also I knew I could increase the capacity, so we actually did a pretty good job because uh, I've got it to 14,000 now as a total. So I almost did all of field 77 with one load. So that gives you kind of an idea at least. So at least I feel like we're all set because I had to go back on some of the smaller fields with the other one to go and it was also obviously taking more time because it was only 12 meters wide instead of 18 meters wide. So this adds 50% to my spreading distance, which is wonderful. But, you know, not super late. We're coming up on 7 p.m. here. So, just get this all taken care of. Again, just been letting course play do its thing. But I think these fields were in massive need of lime. I think it becomes, like, you can go beyond the three that you need to do as far as the three passes when you're then bad. And I think it still will leach more out even beyond that. And so that was a bit of what was going on. But we'll see how this goes, because I think it was about 12, 1500 so I figured I was going to do 4000 but I'm like, you know, because th this area here, you can see it's doing 0.875 as the spread rate, but on some of them, it's, it's down to like 0.3. But what I didn't want to end up was just with a ton of extra lime, because if I need to use this to spread a fertilizer or something, then... I'm going to have pallets and pallets laying around. I mean, I have the pallet warehouse, so I suppose it's not the end of the world. I could try to use that and see how that works. But this is the last pass here. Uh, still pretty quick consumption for now. So it may may be really close in getting there, but I, I think we'll be okay. I don't have too much of a fear that I'm going to run out, but if I get below a thousand, that would say that the four thousand wouldn't have got me there, but it looks like I probably would have, because I don't even think I'm going to get below two thousand, so yeah, but you can see now we're at 0.25, so this is kind of what was 
happening is there's a, a better area over here where it's sandy loam where we just don't need as much lime. So we have that all set and I'm going to get back to the farm because obviously I don't need this any longer as far as a spreader. But just trying to assess kind of how I feel about about things. I, th I think, you know, I mean, there, there's a good amount of workload, so um, that's what I was really worried is, is it going to be too much with what I have set up? Um, I think it's going to get a little bit overwhelming, but I think it's it's okay for the size we have. This is just where I do need to be careful of maybe over expanding beyond what I need. I do feel like I'm getting a little bit behind for uh, next level, for level four. Whoops. Somehow I thought I had turned more. Obviously I had not. There is this kind of blind spot. It's even worse when it's not winter and you can't see through the trees at all. I mean, in that case, I probably would have done more to move the camera, but... Uh, but, you know, the eggs, like, I haven't fed the chickens at all. I mean, I could give them some stuff and get them producing. Uh, it's just I'm worried about, you know, because I think I had, like, four or five hundred chickens in Riverview, and this is a tiny, tiny little egg farm, and... Um, you know, I think I had the four or five hundred, and I needed twenty two thousand and it took me like a year and a half or something to get enough eggs. I'm worried this is gonna take like five years <laughs> to get the eggs I need, but that's part of the fun of what what you get with the v i p order manager is it's always kind of trying to figure out that trade-off of do I do more now again adding more chickens I don't think is necessarily going to mean that it's going to ask for more or less eggs I don't think animal count is taken into effect as much as acreage is so really I think adding the fields is kind of what what gave me that setup all right I'm 13 percent and 10 percent so I don't need to repair at this point so I'm just going to go get this put away. And, but this ends the first full year here in Tuscany, in the hills of Tuscany. And I'd say, you know, looking back, kind of the year in retrospect, I think we did pretty well. I mean, obviously, again, we... We had the advantage of, of starting out with a good amount of money so that uh, money hasn't been uh, a limiting factor yet. Um, like I said, I'm still trying to pay attention to what's happening because, you know, we're, we're not making a profit, if we're being honest. You know, I don't have a, a day that is still not negative. Now again, I'm, you know, I was constructing some things and I don't even remember what I built. Um, oh, that's right. I think I was putting in the beehives and, and uh, you know, there was some landscaping that went with things just to make the, the farm look nice because I definitely would like to keep appearances up and so forth. But we're going to start getting everything in into the ground, uh, you know, because right now a lot of these environmental numbers won't update until we harvest. So I'm hopeful that we'll see some improvement. You know, certainly once I plant, those nitrogen scores will go up, um, you know, because right now I've got... 50, 47, 71, 57, 42, 50. Like, you know, this is the only decent field right now, and that's partially because I replanted it. Corn, if you remember, I planted, but I didn't have any fertilizer, and I didn't go and fertilize it before I harvested it because I was just kind of in a hurry to get what I needed. That obviously means I, I took a hit, and this crop was already in 
before I did anything. So really the two fields that I went ahead and and did some things with, you know, that nitrogen is maxed out. You know, that pH is going to jump up there. So that'll all be really helpful as we go forward. So I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, you know, if you haven't given me any feedback yet and you have some things in mind, certainly please do that. If you haven't liked the video, I'd appreciate if you do that. And if you're not a subscriber yet, I would welcome you to do that as well. It would help me out and it makes things a little bit easier for you to keep coming back. I will see you next time.